almost all pump companies publish what are called the family of curves. The pump family curves are probably the most useful for the maintenance engineer, the design engineer, and the purchasing agent. The family curves present the entire performance picture of a pump. Take a look at the following figure. It shows a typical example of a pump family curve. The family curve shows the range of different impeller diameters that can run inside the pump volute. They are normally presented as various parallel head capacity curves, corresponding to smaller diameter impellers. In our example, these head capacity curves are shown in blue. Another difference in the family curves is the presentation of the energy requirements with the different impellers. Sometimes, the BHP curves, or the energy requirement curves, appear to be descending with an increase in flow, instead of ascending. This is the case in our example here. In other instances, instead of showing the horsepower consumed, the standard rating of the electric motor is shown. This refers to the type of electric motor to be used with the pump. In other words, instead of showing 17 horsepower of energy consumed, the family curve may show a 20 horsepower motor. This is the motor you must buy with this pump, because no one in the industry makes a standard 17 horsepower motor. By showing numerous impellers, motors and efficiency for one pump, the family curve has a lot of information crushed into one graph. In order to simplify the curve, the efficiencies are sometimes shown as concentric circles or ellipses. In our example, pump efficiencies correspond to the red curves. The concentric ellipses demonstrate the primary, secondary, and tertiary efficiency zones. They are most useful for comparing the pump curve with the system curve. The system curve will be covered in detail in the next section. Finally, the net positive suction head requirement curve does not change when shown on the family curve. This is because the net positive suction head required is based on the impeller I which is constant within a particular design and does not normally change with the impeller's outside diameter. In all cases, the impeller eye diameter must mate with the suction throat diameter of the pump. This is an important design feature. The impeller eye should be capable of receiving the energy in the fluid as it comes into the pump through the suction piping. Now, to better illustrate these concepts, let's see a practical example. Let's suppose that a design engineer defines 60 GPM as the flow rate needed for a given process system. He estimated based on the most pressure drop intensive runs on his system that he needs to meet a head requirement of 20 feet. Based on this input, this means that the point highlighted here is the operating point for the system. Now, looking at the different variables presented on this family curve, that would mean that this design engineer would select a 7-inch impeller. Operating the system at this point would give a pump efficiency between 60 and 65 percent. In addition, a motor of 7.5 horsepower would be the best fit for this configuration. Now, once the size, the efficiency, and the power of the motor were determined, this design engineer needs to carefully look at the net positive suction head requirement. He needs to make sure that he has a minimum of 2.5 feet of head at the inlet of the pump. Because 2.5 feet is the net positive suction head required by this pump. Actually, to be more accurate, recall the best design practice we have discussed at the beginning of the course. When selecting or operating a centrifugal pump, always make sure that you have a safety margin of 3 feet above the net positive suction head required by the pump. Therefore, in this particular case, this design engineer needs to make sure that he has a minimum of 2.5 feet plus 3 feet safety margin, so a total of 5.5 feet of head at the inlet of the pump. So this is the design operating point. But as we have seen in a previous video, head is a little bit tricky to estimate. The real question becomes, what if that estimate is incorrect? Let's have a look at two hypotheses. In the first case, this design engineer underestimated the head requirement. In fact, it is 25 feet and not 20. Unfortunately, 
What that means for the designer is that he will not be able to accomplish a flow of 60 GPM, which was his initial design flow. And that he will be instead stuck here, around 35 GPM or less. In the second case, the design engineer overestimated his head requirement. 15 feet instead of 20. The result is a pump providing too much flow, roughly 75 GPM instead of 60. There are of course some negatives associated with that. As you can see from the line for the horsepower, you will have a little bit more pumped energy. You're further away from the peak efficiency, and the system would require a higher net positive suction head. In case this design engineer cannot act on the head of the inlet of his pump, then the minimum safety margin of 3 feet between what is required and what is available will not be met, and his system would be closer to the cavitation conditions.